All right, what's going on, everybody? So I just got out of Blade Runner 2049. I saw it in IMAX. Before I say anything, go see this movie in IMAX if you're going to see this movie. Trust me, you are not going to regret it no matter what the price. I'm telling you, it is so worth it, okay? Um, like I said, if you're planning on seeing this movie, do not see it in a regular uh, showing, you know, regular theater. Uh, see it in IMAX. Like, definitely do it because... Wow, that was a movie. Like, wow. <laughs> um, I'm not even kidding or exaggerating. That was one of the best movies I've ever seen in my life. Like, I just got out of it, but I'm... <sighs> that was a very well-made, very well-put-together uh, movie. Well-directed, well-acted. Um, it's probably the most beautiful movie I've ever looked at. And I've, you know, I've seen Avatar, stuff like that. But... The visuals in this movie and the in the world in this movie and the different settings, it's just, it's like, I don't know, it's just, <laughs> I'm like, you know, at a loss for words, kind of. Um, this reminds me of when I reviewed Logan a couple months ago. I kind of said the same thing where I was like, at a loss for words. Um, this just might beat Logan as like my favorite movie of the year so far. Um, I really don't know because, you know, I am a huge fan of Logan and Wolverine and stuff like that. But um, this was, this was something else. Um, I'm actually a big fan of, like, long, epic movies like this. You know, one of my all-time favorite movies is Apocalypse Now, for example. And that's a very long movie. And it's a very, uh, it's a very, what's the word? Um, there's a lot going on in the movie. It takes a long time to get, you know, to where it's going. It's, this movie is kind of like that. Um, my favorite movie of all time is The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. And that is, you know, three hours long as well. This movie was three hours um, I don't know, just something about big, epic, three-hour-long movies. I just, I just really like it. I think they're, you know, really masterful. Um, oh, man, this movie. <laughs> um, and, of course, you know, this is a sequel to Blade Runner from, uh, 1982. Uh, Ridley Scott directed that, but he did not direct this one. He was a producer. Um, the director of this movie, uh... It's it's not Dennis. I know it's Den it's like pronounced differently because he's uh, from he's French, I think. Uh, Denise uh, Villeneuve or whatever. I don't know how you say his name, but oh my god, <laughs> such a good director. Um, I know he directed Arrival. I actually haven't watched it yet, even though I bought it a you know a couple months ago. Um, I still haven't watched Arrival, but you know I heard great things about it, and I got a bunch of Oscar nominations. But um, wow, he. You could tell he really did care about Blade Runner because he really, you know, he really took care of took care of it. He made a proper, you know, sequel 30 plus years later. Um, and to be honest, this just might be better than the first Blade Runner, which is crazy to say. You know, I've been seeing the reviews already and everybody's saying, you know, it's phenomenal, all this stuff. And some people have actually said, yeah, they think it's better than the first Blade Runner. Um, you know, it depends on which version of Blade Runner you watch. Because the first ver version I watched was actually the theatrical version. Do not watch the theatrical version of the first Blade Runner because it is bad. Um, not the movie itself. It's just they added a lot of nonsense. Like, you know, narration and stuff like that. That Harrison Ford didn't even want to do. Because um, of the studio or something. There was a whole lot of problems when they made the first movie, if you don't know. Uh, watch the final cut. That's a great version of the movie. That's the one to watch. Um... And me, myself, personally, I'm not, like, a huge uh, Blade Runner fan. Like, I've, I've seen the movie, uh, first time I saw it was a couple years back. And then I recently revisited it because, you know, this, mo this movie was coming out. So I watched it a couple times in the past few weeks, you know, just to get ready for this. Because um, I knew I was going to go see this. Um, it just looked, you know, by the trailers, it looked like it was going to be epic. Um, you know, the director, of course, who's, you know, he's a great director um, from what I've heard. And Harrison Ford's back. And Ryan Gosling's a great actor. Uh, Ryan Gosling in this movie was phenomenal. Uh, his his whole character arc was was very compelling. Um, I won't talk about spoilers until the end of this video. I'll I'll, I'll let you know when I'll talk about spoilers. Um, but wow, this movie <laughs> I just don't know. It was so damn good. Now the thing is, you know, I a lot of people might um, if you had a problem with the first Blade Runner kind of being slow in, in places, you might have a problem with this movie being slow in places. Uh, for me personally, I I had no problems with this movie. Literally, I might I might have zero complaints. Like this might be like a near perfect movie. Um, that's like you know kind of impossible, but uh, to me, you know, it it was it was so good. Uh, I really don't have any complaints. There's like maybe one minor little thing, 
but it's not that big of a deal. And I'm going to talk about it in the spoilers because it is a spoiler. Um, and I'll mention it at the end, what I'm talking about right now, what my minor little tiny complaint might be, but I don't know. Now I'm thinking about it. It might not even matter. Uh, but wow, this movie, <laughs> it was so good. Um, I'm trying to think what else to talk about. The visuals were fantastic. All the different settings were really cool to look at. Um, like I said, see it in IMAX. Holy crap, it was so worth it. Um, Harrison Ford was fantastic. Uh, I'm glad that he's, you know, coming back to do his older his older roles. Uh, you know, his famous character, like he did Han Solo. And uh, now he's going to do Indiana Jones again. So, you know, it's cool to see him actually, you know, coming back to these famous franchises. Um, and he did a view is actually very... Uh, you know, I don't know, how do I explain this? He was, he was more than I thought he would be in this movie. Like, he, uh, you could really tell he cared about this character in the story. Like, I, I know Harrison Ford has said that this, you know, he read this script or whatever and he thought it was fantastic. Saw the movie already and said it was fantastic. But you could tell that he actually, like, he had a lot of emotion in this movie. He, uh, he really did play, you know, Deckard well in this one. Um... It wasn't just another, it wasn't just like another generic uh, Harrison Ford role or anything like that. Like this, you could tell. There were layers in this movie. Um, Ryan Gosling, like I said, wow. I would not be surprised if this movie gets, you know, alright. If this movie doesn't win Best Cinematography Oscar, Best, you know, Sound as well, Best uh, Score. Do they do, yeah, they do do score. Uh, best uh, Original Sound, or Score, right? Yeah. Um... I know uh, Evangelist did the first movie, but uh, this one, I think they got Hans Zimmer or somebody. Uh, I don't know, but the f music was fantastic in this one, too. Um, wow, just, uh, it's just a great experience. Like, seriously, even if, you know, you don't see this movie, you buy it on Blu-ray months from now, 4K disc, whatever, and watch it on a 4K TV, nice TV. It's not even going to compare. Like, you have to see it in IMAX, I'm telling you. Um, I cannot stress that enough. Um, I, I'm going to give this movie a 10 out of 10, um, A plus, two thumbs up, whatever you want to call it. Seriously, one of the best movies I've ever seen in my life. So damn good. Um, you know, this kind of reminds me of when they brought back Mad Max a couple years ago. George Miller, you know, finally could bring the full, uh, vision of Mad Max to life with, you know, all these brand new special effects, the technology's way better, um you know, a higher budget, it's kind of like the same with this, you know, Blade Runner, if you look at the old, the first movie, you know, it looks great, you know, it's a, it's a very, you know, it's a film noir movie, it looks very, uh, very unique and very cool, but the fact that now we have, a, you know, in this movie, there's a bigger budget, the special effects have advanced so, you know, so, so much in these, you know, past 30 plus years, um, you know, it's just, it's just amazing. It's like a fan's dream to finally see the full potential of uh, Blade Runner, you know, with the best special effects possible, the best, you know, actors, the best director, you know. It's just really cool to see it. It's like I said, it's like when Mad Max came back and George Miller could finally, you know, do what he wanted to do because, you know, he made Mad Max back in the 70s and, you know, and had a few sequels and it never really looked... You know, those movies, you know, they looked um, different and unique and stuff, but they never really went to the full length of what, you know, Fury Road was a couple years ago. That was a full-on, visceral, uh, visual, you know, art house movie. This one, you know, this movie too is like a very uh, art house movie kind of. Um, I can under I can also see a, not, a lot of people not liking this. They might think it, it's probably like another typical uh, blockbuster or something. But no, this is a, this is a artsy movie. Um, there's a lot of meaning behind it, just like the first Blade Runner, um, tears and, you know, tears and rain. If you've seen the first Blade Runner, you know what that means. Um, replicants, humans, all that stuff. This movie, I honestly think this movie had more emotion in the, in the story and the meanings than the first Blade Runner did. I don't know. I feel like this one might be better. Uh, wow. What a movie. Um, uh, I didn't talk about Jared Leto. He was great as, you know, uh, I guess uh, he's, it's kind of obvious from the trailers. He's like a villain. He was great as that. Um, very unique character, I must say. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, all the actors were great. Um, I don't want to talk too much about each character because it might give away certain things. 
because uh, if you watch the trailers, things are very vague, so I don't want to reveal too much. But every actor, every character was solid. Um, so, yeah. That's it right now for the regular movie review. Now I'm going to talk about spoilers. Um, I don't think there's anything else I need to mention. Uh, but just see it in IMAX. <laughs> Again, I don't know how many times I've said that. Uh, yeah. All right, anyways. I'm going to mention spoilers now, so here we go. Do not watch this. Please, go see this movie. Uh, and then come back if you want. All right, here we go. Spoilers. Okay. Um, my one little tiny complaint I, I mentioned earlier. Um, I wish they did, uh, Jared Leto's character survived. I wish they kind of, you know, like in the first Blade Runner, Tyrell got killed. Um, I figured Jared Leto wouldn't make it out of this one. You know, his character, uh, Wallace. But he did. Uh, I, they, you know, they kind of just left it as like a loose end, sort of. But no... The reason I said it's not really a complaint, actually, is because, if you think about it, the whole um, story is wrapped up when uh, Deckard meets his daughter at the end of the movie. So, you know, Wallace can't can't get to him. There's there's nothing. You know, Wall Deckard's finally free to be with his daughter. So the whole story's wrapped up. Wallace can continue doing his replicant thing or whatever. And then, you know, there's the whole group of replicant, uh, rep replicants <laughs> that, gang, you know, that came together. Um, and they said they want to take down... Uh, I think they said they wanted to take down, well, oh no, not Wallace. They wanted, no, they wanted Ryan Gosling to kill Deckard. I don't think they were trying to take down Wallace, were they? Um, but no, I'm just saying, um, even if Wallace survived, it's not a big deal. Because, like I said, the main story was about Deckard and, you know, Agent K, or Agent K, that's for Men in Black. <laughs> Officer K, my bad. Or, they were calling him Joe. Um, yeah, just, you know, that was awesome. And also... Oh, man, like I said earlier, you know, you know, the director and the people behind this movie were fans of the original because uh, that scene at the end where uh, Joe or, you know, Officer K died, you know, you could tell that was that was a tribute to, uh, you know, Brecker Hauer in the first Blade Runner, you know, Tears in the Rain and then the pigeon flying away. They played the same exact music. I, I cried a little. It was it was beautiful. Um and that was surprising, too. I didn't think, uh, you know, Ryan Gosling's character would die in the movie. You know, going in, I figured Deckard would die because Harrison Ford, you know, he Han Solo got killed. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if Indiana Jones got killed in the next one. Um, but no, uh, Deckard survived. Um, and that was that was cool to see him, you know, him and his daughter. Um, that was that was something. Um I don't know what else I could mention in the spoilers. I just, I you know, I got the main plot points out the way there. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, am I missing anything? Oh, that was cool, by the way, when we saw uh, Edward James Almost character from the first movie with the origami. That was cool. I like that uh, little cameo. And there were a lot of references. Um, there were a lot more references to the old movie, you know, than I uh, anticipated. There was a whole thing with, you know, Rachel, um, you know, the love interest from the first movie, the replicant that Deckard, you know, has the child with. They actually had uh, another replicant identical to Rachel come out at the end. You know, the eyes were a wrong color, you know, Deckard said. But I did not expect any of that. I did not expect them to actually show, you know, a quick image of Rachel or anything like that or play the audio from the first movie. That was really cool. I like that. Um... You know, I was I was hoping too the movie wouldn't go so much fan service because you know the new Star Wars movies in particular really go for fan service more than anything. It's kind of obvious. Uh, a lot a lot of people complain about that, but I, I would say this movie actually handled it in a much better way. I wouldn't say it's blatant fan service. It really did fit the story. Um, so yeah, that was really cool. Um, man, just everything about this movie was amazing, phenomenal. Um, I did not get bored. Like I said, I like movies that are long like this, a big epic scale movies like this. I, I really do enjoy it. I was not bored what, <laughs> at all. I was glued to the screen the whole time. I did not yawn. I did not look at my watch. I did not look at my phone. I was so into this movie. Um, I really do hope it wins some awards. I really do hope at least best director for, you know, Denise, uh, I can't pronounce his last name. Uh, Ryan Gosling, I would hope, gets Best Actor nomination, but you never know, because there's only, you know, five uh, that get nominated, I think, for the Best Actor award. But uh, I really do hope this movie wins all kinds of awards. Uh, 
wow, just phenomenal movie. Ah, oh, man. You know, anytime I see a movie, I've, it's so fresh to me and I'm so excited about it. I always say these things like, oh, it's better than Logan. I don't want to say it's better than Logan yet. So right now, I will still say Logan's the best movie of 2017 because I've seen it so many times already and I still love it. I'm a huge fan of it. This I just saw. I only seen it once. So I can't really say it's better. But, uh, you know, down the line, I, I would not be surprised if I did say this movie was better than Logan. Better than any movie coming out this year or has come out this year because it was so good. Uh, it does go to show that you can do a sequel right and possibly do it better than the first movie, you know, even 30, 35 years later. Um, it's really, it's really phenomenal. Um, yeah, so anyways, you watch this whole thing. That means you've seen the movie already. Let me know what you thought of it. If you're going to mention any spoilers, make sure you say, you know, spoilers in all caps first. So people in the comments won't read what you say if they haven't seen the movie. Um, and what would you rate the movie? Like I said, I'm just going to say 10 out of 10 because it was fucking great. It really was. So, um, yeah. And did you see it in IMAX? Please tell me you saw it in IMAX. Let me know what you thought of that. Uh, so, yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching this whole review. Uh, 16 minutes. You're awesome for watching this whole review if you did. Anyways, um, that's it. Time to die. Bye-bye.